Hi, I'm Tim Shador, and I'm going to be talking about Brick. Brick's a decently complex system that tries to do everything, and there's a couple words that we throw around that may be better explained in a pizza analogy. Uh, this is just a high-level look at Brick. There's no code. It's just kind of an explanation of how the system works together. So, say Toby Maguire, this is a photo of Toby Maguire, walks into a pizza shop. Toby orders a pepperoni pizza, vegan cheese, extra olives, anchovies on half, as one does. The cashier puts the order onto a ticket, sends it back to the kitchen. The chefs look up a recipe on how to make a pepperoni, vegan cheese, olives, and half anchovies pizza. With Mama Little Sweet Hot Peppers, of course. And the chefs in the back goof around a little bit, put pepperonis on their eyes, and use the recipe to combine raw ingredients for Toby's pizza. They have a lot of fun back there in the kitchen. And then Toby leaves with the pizza. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, this was an actual opening scene in an actual superhero movie, Spider-Man 2. Well worth it. It was just a wild time to be alive when superhero movies opened with uh, flying pizza scenes. Okay, so let's do this one last time, and this time we'll r run back through the analogy, but with brick counterparts. So, Toby Maguire walks into the shop. Toby Maguire is our request for data. So say you're on a widget and you want to render a list of users. You need to get all the users that need to appear on this page, say. It's, uh, it's a list of every user in Alaska. So this request for data, this order, uh, is pepperoni pizza, vegan cheese, extra olives, and anchovies on half. The pizza itself is a model. If you're familiar with Ecto or with Rails, a uh, model is the same thing. It's just the very basic business logic layer of an application. Um, and then specifically, all the stuff that he wants on the pizza is his query. So to go back to our user analogy, this is the, the query itself is everybody in Alaska. The cashier is what we call in Brick a repository. Um, a repository manages multiple data sources. We'll get to that in just a minute. So the cashier puts the order um, on a ticket and sends it, sends it to the kitchen. The repository is now going to request the data from a source or a provider. The chefs, they are our provider. Uh, the providers fetch data to and from raw data sources. So a provider could be like Firebase or SQLite or REST. Um, a provider is something that works as an intermediate layer between Dart and a remote source. They consult a recipe, which in our case is a uh, best cauliflower pizza crust. Honestly, that's crazy, and I really applaud the creativity for the authors of that book. Um, a recipe describes, uh, or an adapter rather, describes how a pizza uh, can be serialized and deserialized to and from a source. So say you get a whole bunch of data about these users, but it's in a JSON payload from REST, or it's in a uh, Cloud Firestore document from Fire, Firebase. The adapter converts that code into a model. So that way, you're always working with Dart code instead of uh, JSON code or with Firebase code or with raw SQLite queries. You don't interact with any of that. Brick handles all that behind the scenes. And this recipe tells us how to construct our model. So once we finally have our request for data, it's coming back to us. We know all the ingredients that we need to get. Um, there are now different providers that the repository will call. So in, in the pizza analogy, maybe this is a frozen pizza. Uh, maybe it's a pizza on one of those pizza warmers that they have at the front. Maybe it's a completely fresh pizza. Uh, the repository determines the freshest data that we're going to give. So uh, it will synthesize from multiple different providers. And these providers can be something like a REST provider, or it could be a SQLite provider, or a Firebase provider, or memory cache, or GraphQL. The providers work behind the scenes. So you don't really care about where your data is coming from. You just care that you get your data. Um, so kind of tying this back to the pizza analogy, the memory cache could be, say, the pizza's on the warmer. It's like immediate. It's the freshest thing it can get. Um, the frozen pizzas could be the SQLite provider, and it could be not the freshest data, but if you just warm it up a little bit, it's, it's good enough. Um, or maybe you need the absolute freshest data. You cannot render these users without knowing exactly what their first and last name is, or maybe knowing exactly what um, member points are. And that would be a request to Firebase. Uh, so that would be, we have to now wait for our, the freshest data to come to us. Uh, and to reiterate, Brick handles all of this. So say you don't have any pizzas, Brick will automatically say, okay, make me a pizza and then let me know when you have it. And then I'll serve that back to the, uh, the request. 
So finally, our request for data is satisfied. Uh, the repository then delivers the models back to the caller and the caller can now render the list of users on uh, in the widget. So just to recap, uh, these are the big words that come up often in, in Brick. So the source is the external information warehouse. It could be uh, Firestore, it could be REST, it could be SQLite. Model is the business logic layer. So maybe it's a customer, maybe it's a pizza, maybe it's an order, maybe it's a store. Uh, this is the business logic layer that's unique to every app. And this is really the only thing that um, in an application is ever built. Brick handles everything else on this list. Um, the provider is the thing that fetches to and from, so this works as the intermediate layer between Dart and the data source. And the adapter is uh, the thing that converts these raw inputs. So uh, given a JSON payload, given a Firestore document, the adapter will output a Dart model. Uh, this is generated by Brick, so you just need to run a build runner build command and it's all made for you. And then finally, the repository is the middleware. There is some configuration required per application. Say you need to define your base API endpoint or you need to provide Firebase credentials to the repository so that it can make these requests on your behalf. But there's very little configuration involved other than that. Your repository is the thing that handles all the logic of fetching when and where. You just say, I'm going to just request it once. And then the model dictionary, something that's a little bit lower level, um, is not as important to just the regular run-of-the-mill implementation, but this is, uh, if you're ever building a custom provider, the model dictionary is what connects a provider to a model adapter. So we need to know exactly, if given that the request is for a user model, we need to find the user adapter. And the model dictionary just associates these two in a hash table. Um, so this is a visual flow of how this works. The request, it comes to the repository. The repository queries a provider. The provider says, okay, I, now that I know that I need to render users, what adapter do I use? It asks the model dictionary that. The model dictionary says, use the user adapter. And then the user adapter generates a model, which is then returned to the provider, which is then returned to the repository. And now we have a uh, fully fleshed out model for our original request. Um, however, that's often not the case. You don't usually have one provider. You want to have like a memory cache or a local storage or a, uh, a SQLite provider on the, on the client side, and then you want to have a remote source, like say it's a REST or GraphQL or Firebase. So in this case, um, we have two providers. One could be Firebase, and then one could be SQLite. Uh, they query their own model dictionaries, and then they query adapters to generate models. Adapters are often shared in a single domain. So if you look at the code for say connect offline first with rest uh, they every adapter extends an offline first with rest adapter um, that way we can always ensure that we're generating the same type of model um, instead of generating say like a user sqlite and a user firebase model it's always going to be the same user model uh, once those models are generated again they're returned back to the provider and then the provider returns those back to the repository to satisfy the request for data uh, and that's the brick architecture. Uh, it, it can be a little bit of a mess. Um, and if you ever run into problems, please drop us a, uh, a note on the issues page. Uh, the link for the repositories in the description. Good luck out there.